Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Peter Chats. So I almost forgot about this. I completely slipped my mind. I literally never thought about this uh, since it happened until recently as I was thinking about uh, what I went through in my 20s. And um, I wanted to get it recorded before I forget it forever. It felt like a monumental event at the time that it was happening, but in retrospect, it was just a blip on the radar. It really didn't mean anything at all. I never heard of the quarter century or quarter life crisis ever before in my life. I think we're all familiar with like a midlife crisis, people buying like fancy sports cars and trying to dress really young. And that's like a common like trope, I guess, or theme that you see on TV and in movies. Uh, but I never heard of, um, you know, ever seen a quarter life crisis. And I guess the closest thing to it is probably, you know, people in their 20s that that fail to launch in their life. Maybe in their 20s, even you know, early 30s, they, they don't really launch off. Maybe they're still living at home and they haven't figured out what they want to do with their lives. Um, and so maybe that, that's kind of the closest thing that you see in, in media or in movies about a quarter life crisis. But anyways, I had never thought of it, heard of it, and it actually hit me exactly as I was 25 years old. I looked around on the internet. There's no real definition for it. It's, it's kind of a vague definition. I found one that that I liked, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna share that with you. And it is a period of uncertainty and questioning when people feel trapped and uninspired in their mid-20s and 30s. I think that's a pretty good definition. It certainly felt like the way that I was feeling at that time. So when I was 25, I had been working at my dream job, what I thought was my dream job for a couple of years. Um, things were going pretty well. The people were really great. Um, I was learning a lot. It was a steep learning curve. I was living in Manhattan in the theater district, so in New York City, with three roommates. So it was four of us guys in the middle of Manhattan. And it seemed like life was great. I mean, we, we were on top of the world. We all had pretty cool jobs, living in the city, single, no responsibilities, and no debt, you know, no, no kids. No responsibilities except just to take care of myself. On the outside, I was probably on top of the world. And then boom, this wave of, of feelings, I guess if you can call it that, just hit out of nowhere. And I was suddenly super confused. Um, just super like, just felt really off. I hadn't really like achieved anything in life. Even though I was working in this great job, I didn't know if I was contributing anything to the team. Um, it just seemed like I was learning, but I didn't know if I was giving back that much in terms of, you know, creating you know, business and returns for the team. I remember thinking, I'm technically an adult, I guess. I am working, living on my own, paying my bills, you know, cooking food for myself, um, mostly takeout with some bad home cooking. And so, you know, I, technically I'm an adult and I, I should be feeling like an adult. I didn't feel like an adult, I felt like a kid. I remember my mom and dad got married at 18 years old and they had my sister a couple years after that. And I know the times and circumstances were different, but I just felt so behind, like I was just an overgrown kid. I had no girlfriend at the time and no near-term prospects of a girlfriend. And I started feeling like I was never gonna get married, or if I was, it, it would be like super late in life. And then I, I got worried all of a sudden that I was gonna have kids really late in life and that I wouldn't be able to, to enjoy you know, being with them, that I'd be too old. And all of a sudden I started feeling behind in life. Random thoughts like that would just hit me. It just felt really off. I was looking at all of us in that apartment, you know, us four guys, and we were just a bunch of overgrown kids. You know, we would go to work at our you know, entry-level jobs, uh, come back, hang out, eat, uh, watch sports or ESPN until late in the night, go back, you know, go to sleep late, wake up, repeat, uh, wake up late in the weekends, maybe go eat together somewhere. It was just kind of like goof around life. That was pretty much it for couple of years and uh, I wish I had spoken to my mentor about this but for whatever reason I just kept it to myself and I was thinking that in college you're kind of told what to do you, you pick a major you know maybe it's something you're interested in and you have this pathway that you just you know you're supposed to go on and then you get a job that is somewhat related to your major so you're pretty happy about it you're pretty psyched that you know you're gonna start learning stuff and doing stuff and making money but then after a few years you realize that there's no more like set path. There's no more guardrails for you to kind of bounce along um, towards you know, towards some pins that you're gonna hit and strike. It's just all on your own. You have to figure it out on your own. You have to figure out what you really want to do, how you're gonna do it, when you're gonna do it. And I think it's scary to have to actually make your own decision. And when you're told what to do and there's like a natural progression, it's a lot easier. It's a lot safer feeling. But when you suddenly realize that everything is just wide open for you. 
I think that can be a pretty terrifying feeling after like 20 you know, plus years of being told what to do, going from different grades to different grades to college and now to an entry-level job. Now all of a sudden, you have to make your own decisions. So what did I do? Like, what, what did I do to try to fix it? What did I do to try to like deal with the emotions and the feelings? I did nothing. I just kind of muddled along and just lived life, you know, normally. I found some blogs online. They didn't really offer anything. They just offered like pretty standard like self-help tips or motivational you know, tips. For whatever reason, one of the tips is always like start a side hustle. I don't know why, like when you click on anything that's related to like productivity or like finances or, you know, transition in life, they always like tell you to start a side hustle. I didn't start a side hustle. I was like, I'm not going to start a side hustle. Like, what, why, why would I do that? I, I realized that the best thing that I could do or should do or not do is to not make any rash decisions in my life, not make any major changes uh, while I had these confusing kind of feelings and emotions. I, I said that at the least I would do nothing and just kind of wait it through. I didn't want to risk doing something stupid that I was going to regret later on uh, when these feelings subsided. The other thing I did, and, and I think it actually might be the most useful advice, apart from not doing anything like stupid or crazy, is to take the focus off yourself. You know, turn the spotlight away from whatever you went into a feeling, just turn it on, on something external. So what I did was I started serving a lot more at church. I started volunteering for things, and that actually helped a lot. It helped me not to think about the feelings, and it actually gave me a bigger perspective of what was going on. Because it's, you know, we're all self-absorbed. We really, even right now, you're probably thinking about yourself, and you really think about other people. So just turning the spotlight away from yourself and towards other people and things that are going on in the world is actually really helpful. It worked. It actually worked. The feelings went away. And that's why even today, like, it felt like a blip in my life. I, I didn't really, like, remember it at all. You don't shop for groceries when you're hungry, so you shouldn't make rash life decisions when you feel like you're in a crisis mode. The best thing to do in these cases is to do nothing. I think if I were to give anyone advice, it would be those two things. Do nothing and then turn the spotlight away from yourself and focus on helping other people. And in a very quick amount of time, you will get through it. I think the good thing about going through the quarter life crisis is that once you settle your emotions, you should take stock of like your life and what's going on. You know, what are you happy with in the progression of your life? What are you not happy with? And take some time to think and create some goals. You know, think ahead to the next 10, 15, 20, or like 30 years. Or I think the general good advice that I've always done is just fast forward to my deathbed and think about, all right, what am I gonna regret and not regret doing um, when I'm younger? And am I, am I doing it out of fear? Am I doing it for a good reason? Or am I doing it because I'm just confused? I think if you just fast forward and work backwards, um, it'll help a lot in resolving. Um, you know, help. I think it'll help a lot in resolving confusing situations. If you're in a, if you're stuck in trying to make a decision one way or the other. So I know it's kind of anticlimactic. It wasn't. It wasn't some. You know, it wasn't like an actual crisis. Crisis. It was just this weird blip of. Um, this, it's just this weird blip in your life and it's just kind of part of the process of growing up. So if you're going through this, don't worry, it goes away pretty quickly. If it doesn't go away pretty quickly, I hope that the emotions, or the, the really heightened emotions at least goes away, goes away really quickly and then when they've settled a bit, you can actually take some time not to be thoughtful and just think about uh, what you're doing in your life. Hopefully this helps a little bit. <laughs> if you like, please subscribe, please comment, uh, please like it helps a long way in helping to uh, build the channel grow the channel and um so thank you take care guys bye 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 <clears throat>